This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast and in the background maybe you can hear the Dundalk supporters singing cheerio, cheerio, cheerio. Not sure who they're directing that to. Maybe it's the St. Pat supporters who are leaving the ground following a 3-2 defeat against the town. All the goals coming in a dramatic first half. Gullen on the mark twice for Dundalk. O'Kane with the other. Forrester scored a penalty to make it 3-1. Lennon made it 3-2, but St. Pat's could not find the equaliser. They tried and tried and tried. And now the Dundalk fans are singing, he's one of our own. Stephen Kenny, he's one of our own. We'll have reaction from this game, as well as the other games going on in the League of Ireland today. But I'm not sure any of them can match what we saw here for drama. The final score, St. Pat's 2, Dundalk 3. So that's how Richmond Park sounded at the end. We'll hear from Jamie Gullen and John Daly. We'll also get the thoughts of Stephen Kenny, while Conan Byrne will provide analysis. Gareth McGlynn will tell us all about Derry City's win over Waterford and Donald Ryan will join us from the showgrounds where Sligo Rovers beat Drogheda. That means that Dundalk are no longer bottom. They have leapfrogged Drogheda following their win against the Saints. Let's hear now from St. Pat's manager, Stephen Kenny, speaking to Virgin Media Sports, Phil Egan. Well, I've never been involved in a game where... I don't think we've conceded two two goals in the first few minutes of a game, so that was a terrible start from our point of view. Obviously, you know, the, it was a soft free kick, I thought, to be honest, but obviously it's a brilliant goal from their point of view. It's an incredible free kick, but the second and third goal were really poor goals from our point of view. We had a free kick on the edge of, you know, in a wide area, and for us to concede from that was, uh, so they were poor goals, but the players battled back, and to bring it back to 3 2, they had an opportunity to. It's very rare in your life you three 0 down. You come back and win four three. It doesn't happen too many t- too many teams. So we had an opportunity to do that, but we just couldn't do it. We had a few chances in the second half, but they defended deep and killed the game. Took time out of the game, and uh, we couldn't get a rhythm. And you know, you, you can see we we need we need you know there's big improvements needed in the team. I think we can all see that, and uh, it's um, you know we're disappointed to lose. When you say big improvements, you said even after the the, the win on Friday night, you needed to improve. Do you think a few additions and just players' performances in general? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's been a lot of changes this year. You know, there's been you know a huge number of turnover of players from last season to this season. So it's uh, um, you know players are still understanding what it's like to be at a club with expectation, like St. Patrick's Athletic uh, from in the door, and uh, and and the right balance within the squad is important as well. We, you know, we're, we've lot more players in certain areas than others, mm. and uh, so well, listen, we don't have time to to dwell on the defeat because we have a quick turnaround with Toronto on Friday. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast, and that is St. Pat's manager Stephen Kenny speaking to Virgin Media Sports Philip Egan following their three-two defeat to Dundalk at Richmond Park. Virgin Media Sport had live coverage of the game, and as always, did a great job. Still to come, Dundalk manager John Daly and the analysis of Conan Byrne. We'll also check out the Derry Waterford and Sligo Rovers Drogheda matches. Plus, we'll have a full roundup of everything else that went on. First though, let's hear from Dundalk's Jamie Gullen, who scored two goals at Richmond Park. One of them was an absolutely stunning free kick. After the game, I had a chat with him and started by asking him how he was feeling. Over the moon. uh, Relief. Just a lot of emotions, to be honest. Um, It's a big, big effort tonight from from everyone in the squad and... um, yeah, just delighted to get the three points. I think the start we had, we've not <laughs> been in that position for a long time, been 3 0 up. So, um, yeah, we tried to defend the lead and obviously gave them a couple of sloppy goals, which we'll look back on. But then, second half, when they threw everything at us, we stood up to it and, um, yeah, defended brilliantly. So, uh, credit to every single one of us that, that dug in. You mentioned their emotion. Yeah. Give me an insight into that. What do you mean by that? I just, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it's not going going your way as a team, and uh, personally, it, it's tough. And um, you know, we've just tried to stay as positive as we can, kind of believe in the group we've got because we have a really good squad, and we've shown that at times this season. And yeah, just we want we want to be doing a lot better than we are. So um, that's driving us every single day to to get off the bottom, which we did today, and then to to just keep going and see where we go. And that's where the emotion comes from the team sense. But what about you as an individual? Two goals today. Yeah. And it seems, am I reading you wrong? You can correct me if I, if I am wrong. You seem relieved, like there was pressure on you. Um, well, I think when you're not in, in a rich vein of goal-scoring form, you, yeah, you, 
you're not happy as a striker. No striker in the world's happy when they're not scoring. So um, I just tried to be as positive as I can with performances, helping the team with work, create hold up, and um, yeah, just believing the goals will come, getting the right positions. And yeah, today I got my first goal from open play, which is crazy that I know we're 18 goals uh, games in, but yeah, absolutely delighted. And yeah, just yeah, buzzing for all the boys. What has John Daly brought to the group? Um, he's brought a real kind of belief into the attacking players. I think he came in and that was the the part of the the team that he wanted to improve because we weren't getting enough shots, we weren't threatening threatening keepers enough and um yeah we've worked a lot on kind of attacking play and kind of patterns of play up front and uh I think from Friday and tonight we've created a lot more than we usually do. Um so yeah full credit to him he's coming in and uh, it's a positive start yeah. Are you settled now? Because you look like a different team to the start of the season. You now look like you are a team, like you're yeah. organised, like you know what you're at. Yeah. You just seem happier within yourselves. Obviously, you've just won a game, so you're going to be happier. But it, it, does it now feel different and does it now feel settled, if that question makes sense? Yeah, I think like in the background, there's been a lot going on at the club over the last few months. And as a player, you try and block that out um, and just focus on the Friday nights and doing your best on the Friday Um but yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, we're just, yeah, I want to say delighted that we've got three points tonight. Our away form's not been great and we've tried to address that because we've kept seven clean sheets in a row at home and if we bring that to away games, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be good and win more than we lose. But um, it's just trying to find that kind of defensive stability away from home that we've got at home and then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll score goals. So, yeah, positive. I know you're delighted to score a goal from play. We'll talk about that in a second, but talk me through your free kick routine. Do you have any specific heroes? Like, did you watch David Beckham a lot growing up? Who, who's your hero? <laughs> no, uh, not at all, to be honest. I didn't really hit them in my career until really? until a few years ago, and uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. And then I won a free kick when I was at my old club and just thought, oh, I'll give it a hit. And it went in, and then from there, I was like, oh, I'm all right with them. I'll practice them every week and just grew that confidence, got a routine, and then, yeah, just took them from there. and. Luckily, I think three have gone in this year, so um, I'll keep practising and hopefully more going. And just before I let you go, Owen Kenny came in. I disappoint my dad every day. He only wanted to disappoint his dad today, yeah. but he seemed to add something off the bench. Were you, obviously, you were aware of the storyline. Was that? Yeah. Was there anything in that? Were you thinking of that? Even that John coming back here, with, was that a driver? Uh, no, not at all. I think uh, Stephen Kenny's, you could hear our fans singing, singing his name. I think they absolutely love him um, for what he's done for the club and and I think, I think the gaffer got a good reception coming back here, so there was no kind of incentive for, for any of that. Um, you know, with Owen shot at the end, I thought it'd be quite funny if it went in, it'd be an awkward awkward uh, dinner table tonight, but um, no, he came on, added a bit of energy, um, like worked his, worked his socks off and, and gave us that extra bit up front that um, we were needing, so yeah, he was brilliant tonight. Jamie, well done. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you very much. Time. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast and I'm joined a while after the full-time whistle by Dundalk manager John Daly following his team's 3-2 win here at Richmond Park against St. Pat's. John, how are you feeling after that? Really pleased. Obviously delighted to come away with three points. We knew it would be a difficult task coming to Richmond with the players that Pats have at their disposal, you know, in the starting lineup and on the bench. And we knew that it was going to be very tough. Um, but... Delighted that um, delighted with the start, you know, to go train it up. I don't, I don't think I ever would have envisioned that that's the way it would have went. And I think if there's such thing as can't train it up too early, it was probably that. Um, you know, they have plenty of quality and plenty of time then to get back in the game. And it was just about trying to trying to get through that next period with probably no real um, drama. And obviously, we gave the penalty away followed by the, the corner and, and Pats get rallied and the fans get behind them and then it was just about trying to get to half time without conceding another and then re regrouping and, and trying to come out and go again. You can't plan to go 3-0 up early in a game but what you can plan perhaps is a fast start, a aggressive start. Is that what you looked to get? Yeah, I think we knew we, we wanted to start fast and uh, come out of traps and it was also about like look I, I know that group and Pat's inside out the likes of Forrester Mulraney and Jamie Lennon the quality that they have and Keen Levy these boys that so you, you know it was it was about trying to stop them getting free time free space on the ball and you know no disrespect to the defenders there but they're the ones that you're trying to let on the ball and and um, you know let them be the playmakers for them rather than Forrester getting time and space and, and being able to pick passes so. 
we knew we'd give up a little bit of territory that way, a little bit of possession. But then we also knew when we won the ball back, we could really go and hurt them. And I think we've done that. We've done that really well. And we've we done it in the second half as well with some of the chances that we created. You know, Jamie Gullen's unlucky not to come away with three or four goals there. Um, so now, look, we're really, really pleased. We're delighted. It's three points. It gets us off the bottom of the league. And we've got a massive game now Friday against the Shelbourne team who've had their feet up tonight and haven't had to go and exert any energy uh, with their game being called off. You got a warm reception from the fans here. Did that mean a lot to you? Did that mean something to you? Yeah, of course. I obviously left the club and never got a chance to kind of go and you know say goodbye or anything like that. So it was nice to do a little walk around and give them the applause and the appreciation that of the support that they gave me during my time here. And um, I did. I love my time here and I had a lot of success here and in, in you know winning a cup. The club have only won five and we've delivered one last year. So. Um, so yeah, it was nice to be able to go and just show that appreciation that I have for them as well. And, but um, obviously we've moved on now and it's now focusing on trying to get Dundalk out of the situation that they're in. I'm aware of the, the obvious link that Owen is Stephen's son, but even if it wasn't Stephen's son, I'd still be asking about him after the game because he almost scored, he held the ball up well, he seemed to be playing as a striker and a central defender. He was busy when he came on and he's even busier this week, I think, because he's leaving start starts. Yeah, well, that's what we're probably not going to see him now until um, until Shelbourne. So he's obviously got his leaving cert. But no, he's a good young player. I've um, I've obviously been working closely with him over the last week or so, and um, I've watched him in the twenties there last week play off the left. So that's where he came on first onto the left. But naturally, he's a striker and he he works tirelessly. And I think one of the the big things for me was Friday night against Derry when Mark Connolly comes through the back of him, leaves a bit on him and he just gets up, dusts himself down and goes and chases it and wins the ball back for you. So he gives you loads and loads of energy and, and then that real quality at the end when when Joe Redmond, who won the best defenders in the league 1v1 and you know took him on, shifted it inside and, and forces Danny Rogers into a really good save. And you know, so I'm really pleased with him and um he's a great option for us to have. He's still only young and um you know we've got we've got some good players in the building that I'm really pleased we work with. A nil all draw with Derry on Friday night. This win today, I spoke to Jamie Gullen, he said it was quite emotional and he seemed relieved and happy. As a group, do they seem kind of settled now? I know obviously you've only come in in the last couple of weeks, but he was saying that things have settled down and your appointment obviously has been a major factor in that. Yeah, well, obviously I can't speak about what's been before me, but yeah, I think when there's that many kind of changes in... Um, Leadership is obviously and management. There's obviously then going to be a bit of upheaval and a bit of uncertainty within the group. So I think, I think my appointment has probably given them that clarity that okay, we've got a manager in the building. And I think with my success at Pats, they probably, they probably look and think, I know what I'm doing, which is which helps. Um, and and as I said to them on the first day, I, I wouldn't be here. Genuinely, wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that they were good enough to do it. You know, I, I'm not. I wasn't in any rush to jump back in and. Um, I looked at and weighed everything up and looked at everything and I just felt that it was a, a really good group of players that probably had um, that probably had you know a little bit of uh, the rub of the green go against them so um, so yeah look really pleased to be here obviously delighted to be working with Jamie he scored enough goals against me in his time at Hibs when I was at Hearts so it's nice to be uh, on the on the right side of his goals for a change and finally and you've been more than generous with your time so I thank you for that Dundalk as a town. I don't know have you spent much time around the actual town yet, but it's I've spent a lot of time there myself. It's a great town. It's also a great football town. And mm-hmm. you could get a sense from those fans tonight that they're really behind what's going on and that there maybe there has been a spark in the last couple of games, last couple of weeks. Yeah, well I think I've again I've noticed that even with the games I've watched back, even when I was there as the Pats manager and we drew nil nil up there, like they, they've been bottom of the league most season and the fans have turned up, they've got behind their team and even when you're going around the town as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be living in the area and I'm going to be immersing myself in it and you're, you're right, it's a fantastic football in town and um, they get right behind the team, right behind the players and it's um, it's nice to give them, they've had a lot of heartache this year and it's nice to give them a nice memory coming down here and winning 3-2 and um, it's probably been a while since they beat Pat, so it was it was a nice one for them to come down and get three points and, and go back up the road now and enjoy that. John, well done. Cheers, Oshie. Thank you. He's one of the good guys, John Daly, the Dundalk manager, following their win at Richmond Park. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. Let's get a voice note now from former St. Pat's player Conan Byrne, who was at the match, but after he got home and had to think about things, he put his thoughts together and sent us this message. Yeah, look, it was the perfect start for Dundalk. 
think it was only a minute into the game where they got got that free kick. Jamie Lennon again just giving away needless free kicks in certain certain areas over the last couple of games, and um, this certainly haunted them. Um, wonderful free kick, um, right into the top corner. He obviously he said afterwards that he he didn't even wasn't even going to hit it um, from that distance, but what a wonderful strike! Um, and the second goal, really poor defending again. Um, poor goalkeeping. He has to get get his body behind the ball. Didn't to be allowed have the the shot from that distance to go through. Was really poor. The third was nearly worse again than the first two altogether. Just being able to take a strike from the edge of the box. I think Rogers took a little s- step to the right, which up gave that whole goal to aim at on on his, on Rogers' left hand side, and um three 0 Bit lucky, bit fortunate for Pats to get back into the game um, with the penalty. From my, where I was sitting, I didn't know whether it was a penalty or not, so I can't comment on um, whether it was a stone wall or whether it wasn't. But um, a nice, uh, lovely, well-taken penalty by Chris Forrester. And then from a couple of minutes later, then Jamie Lennon's strike from about eight yards thundered into the, into the roof of the net from Amelia's knockdown. So at that stage going into half time, you're expecting Pats to come out into the second half and, and dominate and put, put Dundalk on the back foot. But it just didn't materialise at all. Connor Keeley had two wonderful chances. I know everyone's talking about the header that he put into the side netting, but I think that the one that he missed completely was an even better chance because all he needed was a touch, and it was got it was past um, Munro and goal. So um, I nearly put down that that down as a worst miss because I think he it wasn't as if that the ball was too high over his head. It was the fact that he didn't want to put too much on it. And he didn't get anything on it, which eventually went into Munro's arms. It was a, a really poor miss from Keeley, and um, both of them were. Melia's half chance in the in in injury time as well with the ball. He's he's kind of spinning on it, and he lays it over the bar. But apart from that, Pat's huffed and puffed. Really disappointing from the from set plays. A lot of them going out of play. A lot of them going into Munro's arms. It was just all too easy. I think Boyle was was very good at the back. Commanded. That the, the back four really well but the best player in the pitch I felt was not by an absolute country mile was Archie Davis his his efforts for the second goal even where he just broke from from Pat's corner and ran 60-70 yards up the pitch culminating in that goal was just the start of what was an, a wonderful 90 minutes from him I'm trying to remember a time where Pat's were actually got by him on a 1v1 um, his energy his enthusiasm um, his tenacity Tackling strength, everything, everything, every hallmarks of a defender or of, or of a fullback trying to get forward and and um, whipping in balls. He, he 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 was excellent, and I think he was robbed of player of the match. If I'm being completely honest, so Dundalk I feel will be fine, and there's a bit of a gap now between the the playoff spot and an eighth, seventh, sixth. So they, but with John Daly in there now, the shape was really good. Maybe didn't create enough chances after they scored the three goals. Didn't really get anything. I know Owen Kenny at the end had a wonderful opportunity to make it four two, with his leaving start starting Wednesday. That would have been a nice a nice goal to celebrate before that. But yeah, from Pat's point of view, I think it'll be it's back to the drawing boards. They need reinforcements. There's no doubt about it. They're weak at the back. They're weak in attack. They're um they're a bit disjointed. Um, I've talked about before the gaps between the strikers in the midfield. There's that link, that that link player. I know Chris Chris Forrest is playing that little bit deeper this season. He's not in higher up the pitch, and I don't know if they have that creative spark to bring the striker in the midfield and in, in, into into a bit of fruition. It's not working. So uh, Stephen Kenny will have his, his hands full. But yeah, it was a really entertaining game. Great game for the neutral. Really enjoyable um, to watch. But. And John Daly will be absolutely delighted going back to, to Inchicore and getting the three points. All in all, very good Bank Holiday uh, Monday in terms of enjoyment, in ter- terms of goals. But Pats will need a, a, a strong um, wake-up call and I'm sure they're going to get one. But reinforcements is needed and I'm sure that's what Stephen Kenny will be looking for more than anything. That's what I took from the game more than anything was Pats need players very quickly this is the extratime.com League of Ireland voice notes podcast and that is St. Pat's legend Conan Byrne on the Saints defeat to Dundalk and what Stephen Kenny needs to do and how big a job of work he has to do let's go to the showgrounds where Sligo Rovers overcame Drata United LOI TV Ocean FM and extratime.com's Donal Ryan was there and afterwards he sent us this voice note Thanks, Oshin. Yeah, full time here in the showgrounds and it's finished on bank holiday Monday Sligo Rovers too. Drogheda United won and it's another big, big points 
for Sligo Rovers and John Russell's men as well. They came flying out of the traps here at the start of the game this evening and looked the stronger of the two sides and got their just reward on 19 minutes after Stefan Radosayevich's free kick rattled the crossbar, bounced down and came back out off Andrew Wogan, draw the goalkeeper's heel. It moved out to the right-hand side where Conor Malley pinged the ball back across the box and Matthew O'Brien, the Drogheda United midfielder, was unlucky to deflect the ball into his own net. And Malley was at it again on 42 minutes as a, a ball came in, a whipped in from the left-hand side of free kick, this time from Caelan Barlow. It fell to Ollie Denham as Franz Piero missed a header and Denham chested it down for Conor Malley inside the six-yard box and he absolutely smashed one into the top right corner to have Rovers 2-0 up at the break. Drogheda United got the perfect response response though at the start of the second half as Jack Keeney managed to smash one into the bottom left corner although it did take a deflection off Niall Morahan but that got Drogheda back on the score sheet pretty much straight away and they threw absolutely everything at Sligo Rovers in that second half but just couldn't find a way through to force an equaliser or go on to force a winner so full time here in the showgrounds it finished Sligo Rovers 2 Drogheda United 1 that sees Sligo Rovers moving up to 6th in the table now while Drogheda United after results elsewhere today have gone down to the bottom of the table on 15 points This is the Extra Time.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast and that was Don Ryan who watched Sligo Rovers beat Drogheda United by two goals to one. Let's go to the Ryan McBride Brandywell where Derry had a good and big win over Waterford. Former Derry and Bowes player Gareth McGlynn who's also a columnist with uh, Derry now was watching that game. He was at the stadium and afterwards sent us this voice note. Thanks Oshin. It finishes here at the Ryan McBride Brandywell Stadium. Derry City 3, Waterford 0. Derry City now close a gap on Premier Division leader Shelburne to just two points with what has to be described as a dominant display against Waterford. Keith Long, Saheed actually came into this game with five wins in six games but to be honest with you they never really got going and the game was finished just before half time as Derry City ran rampant. City now that was their first one in three games and they opened the scoring tonight after 11 minutes when Will Patching sent Ben Doherty who was playing left back but he might as well be playing left midfield um, he went scampering down the left uh, cut the ball back to Michael Duffy who took a touch with his right foot onto his left foot and half volleyed it into the top corner and that was a great finish that was actually his fifth goal of the season the second goal soon followed as Waterford momentarily were down to 10 men as Parry Gammond uh, Padre Gammon, sorry, was off the pitch with a head injury um, and it was Mark Conley heading home from Will Patching's cross to make it 2-0 it was sheer dominance from Derry City at this stage and they made it 3-0 after half an hour when McMullen latched onto a loose pass from a Waterford midfield uh, and played it immediately to Pat Hoban who drilled home for his first goal in seven games it was a miserable first half for Waterford, uh, but they nearly pulled one back with an absolute great strike from Connor Parsons. He cut inside from the left onto his right foot, put a brilliant effort past uh, Mar- Brian Marr. Brian Marr was nowhere near it, but it crashed off the post and stayed out. The game then, the second half, the only talking point, it was actually stopped for about eight, eight nine minutes when Patrick McElhinney seemed to fall badly on his shoulder or his arm. Um, it was... It, <laughs> It looked really bad. He actually hit the ground and immediately you could see his arm going up and, and, and notifying the, the bench that he was in some pain. Um, it was a challenge in the middle of the pitch but with Abimi Arubi. He came on as a sub and to, 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 to be fair, he put himself about and he caused the, the Derry defence no shortage of problems. Um, he was actually quite lively when he came on. Um, so the stretcher came on and took Patrick off. Um, that meant 11 minutes of injury time but to be honest with you, nothing else much happened as the game fizzled out. So it finished here, Oshin, Derry City 3, Waterford 0. A big thank you to Gareth McGlynn for joining us from the Ryan McBride Brandywell. Right, let's do a rundown of the results. Sligo Rovers 2, Drotty United 1, St. Patrick's Athletic 2, Dundalk 3 and Derry City 3, Waterford 0. In the first division, Wexford 2, Longford 2, Bray Wanderers 3, Cove Ramblers 1, Cork City 0, UCD 0, Finn Harps 1, Athlone Town 1 and Kerry 2, Treaty United 1. Let's have a look at the tables. It's Shelburne, still on top on 37 points. They're too clear of Derry, but uh, Shelburne have a game in hand. Shamrock Rovers, they're in third on 31 points. Waterford, fourth on 28 points. Galway, fifth on 27 points. Sligo Rovers, sixth on 25 points. Bohemian, seventh on 24 points. St. Patrick's Athletic, eighth on 23 points. Dundalk, second from bottom on 16 points. And Drogheda, bottom on 15 points. Let's take a look at the first division table. 
Cork City, still well clear. They're nine clear of UCD who are second. Then it's Athlone, Finn Harps, Bray, Wexford, Cove Ramblers, Treaty United, Kerry and Longford. There are of course big international games this week. Ireland taking on Hungary in a friendly, the first of two games. And uh, for the women's team, a huge game against Sweden. Let's hope they can get something out of that match. Uh, Luke Jordan will be along with the extratime.com I was going to say League of Ireland podcast during the week, but he'll obviously talk about the international football as well. And uh, we may get a treat and be joined by McDara Ferris, who was at the Champions League final. I spoke to him on uh, KCLR radio on Sunday afternoon. He did a really good analysis of the game and uh, said the atmosphere was every bit as it came across on TV. Sometimes the atmosphere can be different at the, gr- at the ground uh, to what it appears to be on TV and and, and vice versa. But apparently, it, you know, it was just as good at Wembley as it came across on TV. Uh, that's it for myself, Oshin Langan. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you had a nice bank holiday weekend. Uh, we'll be back again with the voice notes on Saturday morning. And uh, we hope you join us for that. I'm going to ask again for a bit of a favour. And you know what I'm going to ask. If you could like, subscribe, review and rate, even if it was just one of what I just asked, for you to do there that would help us out big time and we really appreciate it you can get in contact with us on at extra time news you can find me on at Oshin Langan and don't forget you can read all about Irish football on extratime.com uh, until next time take care bye bye <laughs>